Hey everyone, today I'll be showing you guys how to install alt -app Gobos. I'll explain how it works and how to use it and I'll share a few tips and tricks so you can get the best out of it. The first thing you want to do is you want to take the zip file you downloaded, put it somewhere on your computer where you will remember where it is and you want to delete it afterwards and simply unzip it. Now this is not an add-on but it's an asset library so we need to unzip this and then point Blender to this location. So after it unzips you can simply go ahead and delete the zip file itself and you should be left with an alt app gobos folder where the contents will be the actual pack itself. Now you want to remember the path to it to this folder and that is it. So we can return back to Blender, go to the edit preferences, go under file paths, click the plus icon over here, locate the folder, open it so you see these folders inside and just click add asset library and the path should end with alt type gobos. You can double click here to rename it if you wish so and that is it. You're done with the preferences part. Now inside Blender if we split our view and set one of them to the asset browser, drop down this and set it to alt tab gobos, you will see that we have successfully installed the gobos pack. So the first thing I want to show is the categories here on the left. We have image based, nodes and then procedural. I started off with going to the image based ones. I'm going to enable my scene, go into rendered mode and simply pick any of the presets that I want to use and drag it into my scene. This adds a light with the gobos texture on it. So if I just position it like this, you will see that we have our gobo. For the image based gobos, any preset that starts with this bracketed A here is a pre animated one. So if you just hit play, you will see that the gobo itself has animation. Before we go into the actual node itself, I want to show you a few controls for the actual light itself. So select your light, go over to the right side here and click on this green light over here and you will have your settings. Now the ones that we're mainly focused on are the radius, spot size and blend. The radius defines the amount of blur that your bokeh will have. So if I drop this down to zero, you will see that the bokeh is very sharp. So you want to keep this value at something rather low to just give it some blur effect around the sharp edges. Next up is spot size. This simply defines the radius of your spotlight and you can kind of use this to fine tune your light a little bit more. The blend value here will define the edge. So the outer edge of your light. If we set it to zero, it's going to be sharp again. And if we set it to like one, it's going to be nice and like blended off to the sides. So these are like the few basic controls that you will always need and are very useful to have, especially the radius one. Uh, now, these controls are also present on Alt App Studio. So if you have that installed and just click your hotkey for your pop up menu, you can control the spot size, the blend value and of course the radius and all of that inside of this menu over here as well. So going to the node itself now, you want to have your light selected and be inside the shader editor to see the node group. We have the emission strength slider here, which I kind of acts like a multiplier of your power. So it allows you to just dial in the power value here on your node. One thing I forgot to mention is that on the light panel over here, you can drop down the nodes section here and you will also have the same controls that you have on the node all in this one menu. But I tend to find this menu a little bit messy, so I just prefer to use the actual node itself. Next up, we have the invert section. This simply swaps the black and white parts of your gobo. So you can get some unique looking gobos on some of the presets. Of course, it doesn't work the best on, on all of them, but it has a purpose. So it's there and it's a simple toggle for you to use. Next up, we have the color drop down over here, which allows us to recolor our light in any way that we want. Or we can also tell it to use a black body, so a temperature value to get a different look. Next up, we have the mapping section. This allows you to simply move your gobo around. You can rotate it and of course you can scale it. To select multiple values like this, you simply click and hold and then drag your mouse down so you select more values. Then you can hold left shift as well to kind of dial in more precise values and just let go when you're satisfied. Now since these gobos are animated, down in the more options, we will have a windy toggle. If we click this, you will see that the gobo switches to a more windy version of itself. So that's a very simple way to just kind of get a different look for your gobo as well. And next up, we just have one socket that I haven't covered yet. It's the combined gobo in. So on the asset browser, if you go under the notes section, you will also see that these have a different icon attached to the preset themselves. So if you go under all, you will see that this is the light itself. And then this is its node setup. So going to nodes, we drop this down, image based, and let's take a window. We can combine 
the current gobo that we have here with a window gobo. So if I take, for example, window three and drag the node group into shader editor and connect the combined gobo out to the combined gobo in, you will see that we have now combined the two effects. When you're chaining the gobos, the last gobo in the chain, so the one connected to the light output, is the one that controls all the values. So your emission control and your color control, everything is on the last one. So whatever you will do to this one will have no effect. So you need to use the last node in the chain to control your light. So this kind of covers the image based gobos and just kind of showcases the simple way to combine them. Next up, we have the procedural ones. These are a bit different. They work in the exact same way. The controls are in the exact same places. They just have a couple of different settings. So if I take like, let's take a noise pattern over here. Let's lift it up above our Suzanne and let's go to the note group. Let's turn the strength up a bit so we see it better. Let's just put it up to 10. The first difference is that for the spot size, for the procedural ones, there will be no cutoff. So an image one will obviously have the image being the cutoff of the gobo, whereas the procedural one will just spread as much as you tell it to kind of spread. And then the other difference is obviously just the procedural nature of those gobos. And you can find those settings in the more options panel down here. For some presets, you will have more settings down here. Some will have less. But they're all based on either noise textures, gradient textures, some Voronoi textures, magic textures. So all of the controls you should be already pretty familiar with. The W is basically just the seed of your gobo. You can control the scale of this so you can make it really dense or really small. You can control the level of detail, you can control the roughness. And of course your lacunarity of the gobo and your distortion values. And of course everything else still applies so you can go ahead and take your node or your window node group again drag it into your scene and combine it with the procedural one so if i put it before it it will actually just kind of stamp it on top whereas if i go ahead and connect it here in between and just switch this around you will see that we have our light and then the noise procedural one inside i'm just going to drop the emission strength on that one and i'll go into the window and kind of increase its scale so you can just see it better we have our window gobo and then we have our noise pattern gobo inside of it the next thing that i want to showcase is that you can animate any of the values on kind of any of the presets but for example the procedural ones you can turn them into animated ones yourself as well simply find the value that you want to animate for this example it's the face offset so that will make it spin if a preset doesn't have phase offset, for example, like noise pattern three, which won't have the phase offset, it will have its noise settings. The phase offset here kind of works in a different way. It doesn't really spin the gobos as you would expect. You can always use the mapping Z rotation. This will allow you to spin the gobo. Of course, you can also use this to get all sorts of different effects. So if I just move the location, I could also animate this. I could then combine it with some other animation for the scale. So there's a lot of options to kind of get different combinations. Going back to our fan, you can of course just keyframe the phase offset. So you can insert the keyframe, move down the timeline and insert another keyframe. Or you can click on the value that you want to animate, type in hashtag frame divided by a number. So I'm going to do 25. And now if I hit play, you will see that my fan is spinning. You can also then just adjust this number. So if I want it to spin faster, let's do divided by less, which is 10. And you can also multiply this. I don't know how much I should multiply it here by like by 100. If you want to invert that direction, you just divide, you multiply it by a negative number. It's going to spin that way now. So it's very easy to get animated presets as well from this. So that about covers the main part. So you have your image based animated and static image based gobos over here. You have your procedural ones. You can animate and tweak any values inside the node group or in the light data properties and over here you have every preset done as a node so you can simply drag as many as you need combine them to create your own variations or your own unique gobo effects inside the node section under color presets you can also spice up your gobo a little bit more we added a few simple presets that allow you to add certain effects so for example if i take simple gradient that's unticked so that we're using the color socket and simply connect the color to color. You can see that we now have a gradient. You can animate this value or you can go inside the node group and just change the gradient here as well. You can change the colors and you can just tweak it how you would like. And some of these presets are also animated by default. So if we take, let's take police lights and we hit play, 
you're gonna see that that is already animated and this one has a bit of a different police light effect or for example candlelight if we connect the color and the emission here and crank this up you will see that we get this candlelight effect on our gobos now the next thing i want to share is kind of just a simple basic thing that i've seen that not a lot of people know is you can actually point lights in a much easier way than just rotating them like this you can put your light wherever you want to put it and then you click shift t on your keyboard and it will point wherever your mouse cursor is pointing so if i want this type of effect i can just put my light there and shift t to this location over here so i think this is just a very quick and effective way of positioning your light now all of these gobos work very well if you have some type of volume object in your scene so if I go ahead and add just the cube and I stretch it around the whole scene, remove this and add a volume or a principal volume node, connect it to the volume and decrease this, you will see that I have God Rays. Now a little bit of a shameless plug here, but if you have alt Easy EasyFog 2, alt Gobos Gobos pairs very well with it. So you can take any of the presets that you want, for example, the God Ray Fog and just kind of chuck it in there. You have controls for your density, you can recolor your fog, stuff like that. So the Gobos pack works very well if you have a volume inside your scene. The link to Altep Studio Pro, which is the tool that gives you context menus based on the thing that you have selected, will be down in the description as well. As well as Altep Easy Fog 2, which is our procedural library of volume effects, as well as a huge library of VDBs that you can use inside of your scenes. So I think that kind of sums up Altep Gobos. It's a simple product, yet very effective at what it does. You have your image based, your nodes, and your procedural presets. And with that, I think you can create some wonderful scenes which if you do, make sure you join our Discord channel and share them with us. We love seeing what you guys create. And that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon.